Yeah. Okay, give me your focus here, everybody. Put all your distractions away. You can check your March Madness brackets in 15 minutes, okay? Yeah. All right, phones away, focus up front. Um, we're just going to cover, we have like half a page of notes is all we're doing. And then most of the day is just to continue to practice this idea of Vesper, but then adding on this thing also as polarity. Okay, kind of looking at the rest of our unit, once again, this unit is all about structure. And the end goal is understanding that structure determines function. The structure of a molecule is why it behaves the way it does in the world we live in. It's why certain things are good for us, it's why certain things are bad for us, it's because of the way the molecules are built. Okay, um, so the last type thing that we're gonna be really doing the rest of this unit, we'll be taking the test, by the way, right before we head off on spring break for this unit. Um, so we still have kind of a while we can have. Um, but is we're looking at why do things behave the way they do in terms of their structure. Okay? So before we talk about this thing known as polarity, let's talk about magnets really quick. Okay? All right. I think we're all pretty familiar with magnets, but let's just get it in our mind here. All right? So when I have two magnets like this, okay, if I flip it, they attach. Right? But if I flip it around, right, they don't. And you can literally feel, right, the repulsive force, right, like you do with your, like, your air buds and stuff like that, right, because magnets in there. Okay? Um, what's the difference between this and this? Expand, Mason. Good. So what charges come together? Opposites, right? So positive and negative things attract, like charges, repel. Okay, um, that's going to come up as we talk about this thing known as polarity. Okay, so let's get this down and then we'll do some visuals here. All right, so polarity is a thing that we label to a molecule when you have an uneven distribution charge within it. Okay, so if I say this molecule is polar, okay, think of how we call it the North Pole and the South Pole polarity. It's because that molecule has an uneven distribution. One side of the molecule is negative and one side is positive. And because of that, the molecules can now interact like magnets if they have this property of polarity. So the key today is being able to look at something and identify is it going to be a polar substance or would it actually be nonpolar, which means no positive, no negative, meaning no force of attraction, okay? The reason why this happens in a bond or in a molecule is because of electrons, right? So when we built our little molecules and using the sticks, what do the sticks represent? What do, we, what do these represent? Bonds. Bonds. Good. And a bond is made of? When we draw the Lewis structure, we have to connect two dots to make a line. What are the dots? Electrons. Right? So every bond is electrons. Now, what these models don't show is that the electrons, even though they're shared, they're not shared equally. Okay, you can share something with your sibling without sharing it equally, right? Like you can break a cookie and give them the bigger piece because you're a good person. <laughs> right? But like you share with them, but it's not equally. The same thing happens with electrons. The electrons are not shared equally. Now, I've made a model to help us visualize this. And I want you to understand that this model, in terms of like a real, real atom, is very simple. Um, but sometimes simple is the best place to start, right? Okay, so if I have, let's do this guy right here. Okay, so these little pipe cleaners on the side or in the middle, okay, are representing the electrons within the bond. Okay, so think these things are negatively charged. If they're shared equally, you can visualize the electrons are like in the middle of the bond. But what happens is some atoms are stronger at pulling electrons to themselves, as we learned way back in like unit one when we talked about the trends of the periodic table. Mm -hmm. 
And so what happens is if the middle atom, let's say, is a stronger electronegativity, it can pull the electrons closer to itself. Or vice versa, if the outside atom were to have a higher electronegativity, then we would see them get pulled more outward. What that would do is it would result in a negative shifting in the direction that it's at. Okay? All right, let's keep going here. So we're looking at this one here. Now the trend for electronegativity is bottom left to top right. In the game of the tug of war, fluorine always wins, francium always loses. Okay, so when you're comparing, so if I'm looking at H to Cl, since Cl is much farther that way, we know the electrons, so take a pen here with me, are going to be pulled toward the chlorine. So we can represent this shift in the electrons by showing what is called a polarity arrow. It has two parts. It first has the direction the electrons are being pulled based on electronegativity. Right, so the reason why we drew it this way is because this one, right, Cl has a higher electronegativity. They always win the tug of war. Okay. Then the second part of the arrow, what charge do electrons have? Negative. 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 So if you take negatives away from something, what is it going to become? Positive. Positive. So on the tail of the arrow, we turn it into a plus sign to show that. That this side is going to become positive, and this side is going to become more negative. And that's what we would then call a polar molecule. Questions so far? Okay. So let's look at some more polar molecules here, and then we'll look at what it means to be non-polar. So in order to be polar, you have to be able to say one side is positive and one side is negative. If it's like distributed throughout, then it's nonpolar because it doesn't have distinct sides. To be a polar mole, you need a very distinct positive side and a very distinct negative side. Now, in terms of our progression here, we started with Lewis structures, we then look at a 3D shape, and then you look at polarity. You have to think in 3D to determine whether it's polar or not um, because that determines the direction that it's going to go, which is why we'll continue to use our model sets. Okay? So for example here, okay, so we have this molecule right here, which is CHCl3. Okay, is this image printed on your paper? No. Just that one is, not that one. Okay, we'll do that one in a second. So first thing to look at when you're trying to determine if something is polar is which way are the electrons being pulled in each spot, right? Like if I have the model, which way am I going to push the pipe cleaner beads? Okay, so starting with C and H, looking at the PR table, who wins the tug of war between C and H? C. C, right? So C is my center. I'm going to say these three bottom ones are my H's. So I'm going to start by sliding all of the pipe cleaners towards C. Then, on top, is CL. Who wins between CL and C? CL, right? The closer they are to F, the better they are to F. So for this top guy, oops, sorry, these pipe cleaners are getting pulled up. Now, after you've done each individual bond, take a step back. Tate and Craig. Take a step back and look at it from a bigger picture of are all the electrons going in one direction or are they kind of going all over? If I'm holding it like this, is there a direction you could claim the electrons are traveling? Ah. Good. So maybe you went like this. Like, do you see how in general, oh, sorry, keeps twisted. They're all going this way. And so this molecule is going to be polar because it's going to have a negative force here and a positive force down here. Okay? 
Now, let's look at, just to compare, and then we'll come back to this. Let's say hypothetically for analogy sake, instead of CL, this is also now an H. How would that change what my pipe cleaner is doing? Good. Katie says, these ones are now getting pulled inward. Is there now a certain direction all the electrons are going in terms of up, down, left, or right? No. Nope. So now this molecule is nonpolar. If all of it gets pulled to the center, or oppositely, if it all is getting pulled out, there's no uneven distribution. Okay? Questions on that for now? Lincoln. Oh, I said that totally backwards. <laughs> so yeah, so if I redid that here like this, and then we'd have negative here, positive here. So that's why it would be positive because all the electrons. Yep, yeah, because the electrons are moving that away from so that side. Uh -oh. why, would I was the, so why would the electrons move away from the positive? Well, so they're moving based on, I just looked at this backwards. I said CH3Cl, but it's CCl3. So these are CLs. So between C and CL, they're all going this way. So then this one's also going that way. Because so it's that's, all going down. Oh, that, that one's H, yes. and the C is more powerful than Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, let's look at another one here. Let's look at our water. It's already kind of shown, but let's draw it out. So, first step is who's winning the tug war between O and H? O. O, so they're all being drawn this way and this way, which we would say is up. And so, yes, this molecule is polar. Okay? Now, because of this idea of being uneven, there are some patterns you can pay attention to that help you identify if something is polar or not. One is if it has ghost. Something with a ghost is always going to be polar because they're never, like they're always angled, right, when there's a ghost on there. So if you see that there are lone pairs on the center, clarify this, see how it says lone pairs, make sure you know on the center, Adam. So if there are lone pairs on the center atom, it's always going to be polar because the lone pairs make them bent and not even. The other thing is, if the atom is bonded to different things, like in this one, how it was like three CLs and one H, that's also always going to be polar because it's not an equal tug of war. Versus if this side's also a CL, then it would be so symmetry plays a really big role in whether something is polar or not. Okay, here's what we kind of just said for the nonpolar side. So if something is nonpolar, all of the atoms are bonded to the central are the same, and there are no lone pairs on the central atom. If that is the case of the structure, then it's always going to be nonpolar. So for example, right, it doesn't matter in this case if the, all the beads get pulled in or if they all get pulled out, there's not one side that's positive and one side that's negative. Any other questions for now on polarity before we try something? Okay, turn to your table buddy and define for them, try not to look at your notes, what does that mean if something's polar? Oh, 
one side of it that sounds like close quarters and just about like you said that you some calls and those like don't go back and they're all going in opposite direction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you said, I heard it in a few different ways, some I want to clarify. If you said that a polar molecule is a molecule that has a positive side and a negative side, have a smiley face because you are correct. That is what it means to be polar. <laughs> Don't define polarity by the pattern. That doesn't tell you like what it is, it just tells you how it's made. Right? So you can't say like polarity is when something has lone pairs. That's not what it means to be polar, it's just a pattern of the polarity. Now, here's the really cool part that we'll see as we continue this discussion in our lab next time, okay? So we know, as we mentioned, that this molecule, look up here, everybody, real quick, last one minute, okay? So this molecule is polar. The electrons are drawn towards the O. So what charge would the O have? Negative. Electrons are negative, so the way they're going, so this would be negative, and these are positive, okay? So if I have another water molecule, obviously it's doing the same thing, okay? This is negative, these are positive. What's going to happen when two water molecules interact with each other? How so? How are they going to connect? Right? Which, I'll use for instance next time. So this is just another model of water, okay? It's like a condensed, they, they take the sticks away and just stick the atoms together, but see how it's bent, right? So because water is polar, when two water molecules come together, they link up. So the right goes in the white because the positive attaches to the negative. And this is why water does so many cool things. This is why it makes cool snowflakes. This is why it hurts if you belly flop on top of it. This is why it helps send vitamins throughout our bodies. Like if water didn't connect like it does, like the earth would collapse if water wasn't polar. Because the polarity causes it then to be able to do so many things, which is what we'll then see in our lab next time as we do experiments. Take. Is that probably why water is like a little bubble? Like it doesn't really have a Yes, exactly. Yes. If it didn't have polarity, it wouldn't. Okay, tonight's homework. Go to your homework assignment. You have a good 20 minutes to work on it, which will be like. Enough time to get it done. Can we watch the ridge? We will watch the ridge. Yes. Uh, so, molecular geometry practice. But there's one thing I need you to change on here. So, everybody flip to this really quick. Otherwise, you might do something wrong. Flip to this really quick. Okay, I want to change one part to this assignment to help us in our learning progression. Okay, the very last column that says bond angle, I want you to cross that off. And I want you to tell me if it's polar or non-polar. Okay, because we're not even really going to like quiz you on the bond angles, for this, but like I want us to really get polarity down. Okay. All right, should have plenty of time to get this done and not have any homework over the weekend, okay? I'll turn on the ridge in about 10 minutes when we're getting close to the class, but. I forgot my packet I think there's extras if you go to the what did I miss. Rip one out of there, Gavin.